place every time. So it seems like every Thursday I have to go out to scout camp, which is my paying job and that I do on the weekends. And so another in-person meeting to get ready for trying to get back in in-person things for scouts. And um, so now I'm, you know, going all over camp trying to find a good place with the Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I'm in a staff cabin. Wow. And I think she actually froze a little bit, but <laughs> um, as she's going to be unfrozen for a little bit, today um, is Thursday, August 13th. We are so excited. Like a hundred. See, she's talking. <laughs> we were going to talk about the weather because she's uh, actually, Austin is a little bit hotter than Houston. We are 93 degrees here in Houston. I think they're over a hundred in Austin. Is that right? Shay, I think we got you back, or are you in La La Land? <laughs> I think Shay is still frozen, but we're excited to yes, talk. It is. Oh, oh there God. you are, sort of. All right, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> She's not in the land of frozen. <laughs> but uh, how hot it is over there? It's 105, y'all. It is hot, and I am at camp. <laughs> with, with no AC. So uh, yeah, it's hot and, and apparently really bad internet. So <laughs> I love you all and I would love for you to see my sweaty face, but I'll just talk today apparently. <laughs> well, we see your name and awesome. we hear you. <laughs> but today we're actually going to be talking about some really good topics about, you know, uh, distance learning, of course but how to manage your distance um, learning. Um, and we have a very special uh, guest speaker today, Miss Isis Fan, or Mrs., sorry. And we actually know her from Fundamentals of Learning. She's the CEO of an organization. We've been seeing her all summer long doing these really great um, workshops that she's been doing for families on Facebook Live. If you haven't seen her, you're missing out. Yes, so we would like to bring out. her on. You're muted. <laughs> and I said I was going to see, I spoke that. I spoke that. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, hello. Thanks well, for coming, I said. Hey, Shay. Hey. So thanks so much for coming on the show. I mean, you can hear her. So <laughs> we tend to do things differently on the show. <laughs> we surprise our guests. You know what? It's about going with the flow. It's 2020. We're all parents. We've got to make it work. Right. This so is be, the year. This is yeah. the year going with the flow. I mean, being parents, I mean, this is what we do. We got to work with what we got. <laughs> you know, but uh, Isis, tell us a little bit about yourself for those that don't know you. Yeah, so I am Isis Fan, of course, like they have already stated, and I'm I'm coining the phrase that I'm a mom educator because um, I have children that I'm teaching at home, of course. Very true. I also have my students. Um, as the owner of Fundamentals of Learning, I really work to narrow the engagement gap, the equity gap, and the instructional practices gap for a majority elementary families. So I speak to families, but I also speak to educators and teachers about ways that we can really connect with families, connect with one another, and really just make learning possible for, for children. That is awesome. And I'm in South Carolina. I forget to say where I'm from a lot of times. Right. I'm, I'm <laughs> located like in South Carolina. <laughs> Even though we are on Zoom, it feels like you're like right next door to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are so thankful that you're here because I know be not only as a mom, but as an educator to help us give us, you know, families out there some tips about how to set up their house, you mm -hmm. know, for remote learning. A lot of schools had already started, at least here in Texas. I don't know about over there. No, we start, well, majority of our districts are starting September the 8th. We have until after Labor Day. So here it's a little, at least in Houston, it's a little different. A lot of them have done started the, the remote learning, the distance learning. Okay. The in person is like later on after like September 8th, but a lot of them have already started. Okay. Yeah. And Shay, what about Austin? 
Yeah, same thing. Most everybody is starting this week. A few mm -hmm. of them started last week. Very few are, are starting um, the following week. Some of them already, I found out today, like Liberty Hill out in the country, um, they're giving the kids the option of distance learning or in person already, which I didn't really think any of the districts around me were doing in person option. It was all distance learning, but they do have, I guess, some with the option of in person or, or distance, depending on probably your numbers and, and what phase or whatever, whatever the judge in your county says, uh, mm -hmm. since that's how they're doing it is by county. So. Yeah, that's a whole new conversation here in Texas, especially Houston with our judge. Yeah. <laughs> I won't even touch that. <laughs> I don't know how it is over there for you, Isis, but it is here. Yeah, so we actually have, well, it's, it's based on your district, which is very, which is in itself a little, because uh, the, the district next door has three to four options, but I know in my district, we really, if you're an elementary family, you really only have two. So right. either you're going to do the traditional route and they go every day mm -hmm. um, face to face, or you do a hybrid model, um, which you go two days a week and you will two to three days a week. And those other two days are um, virtual. But yeah. then you have only middle and high school families can actually do full-time, everyday virtual. Elementary families don't have that option in my county. But like I said, the county next door, it could be something completely different. Yeah, it's, it's different here in Houston, but it's like you said, it's based on the school district. We have a lot of, we, our biggest district is Houston Independent School District, but you have Sci-Fair, you know, you have all different di types of Klein, all these dis surrounding districts in Houston, mm -hmm. and they're all doing something totally different. Yeah. And most of them are doing like two options, but some are offering the four options or three options, you know? Yeah. Or, so it is tough for a lot of parents to make that decision. I know um, like my sister is, was struggling with that because mm -hmm. you know, my nephew's autistic mm -hmm. and it's hard. She's like, I have to put him in person. He didn't do well with distance learning. Right, and that's okay. And, mm -hmm. and that's okay. And that's the one of the things I've been stressing a lot to my families is it's really like like the show said, my child, my voice is really what is going to work best for your family. Right. And yeah. there is a lot of, you know, people making blanket statements. Oh, I wouldn't send my child and all these different things. But at the end of the day, the family has to make the best decision for that family. And there exactly. really are no, no cookie cutter answers right now because all of our children need something different well, and that's across the board right with parenting it's there is no even within my i think we have a producer that's trying to chime into our conversation yeah, yeah, muted and stuff. there we go <laughs> it's like the ghost of um, producer in the show that's all right <laughs> anyway. ghost you, you didn't know he was on but he's on <laughs> So what were you saying, Shay? Because <laughs> even, even, you know, talking about cookie cutter, even within my own house, uh, parenting in general, I can't parent each of my own kids exactly the same. Right. I've, had, I've had to do different things with each kid. And so that's True. why it's so hard during this time because it's such a crazy time, mm -hmm. you know, and such a big dynamic uh, decision that um, as parents are trying to figure out, well, what do I do? It, even within your house, trying to figure out distance learning or whatever is going to be different per child. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why we wanted to bring up this conversation about, you know, managing your distance learning day at home, like how to set up, you know, your home. And this is where we love that Isis is on here so she can kind of guide us as an educator. Because, yeah. I mean, you had to do your own class, and then now you had to bring your class at home. And then if you watch Fundamentals of Learning, she did an awesome job on, a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. on bringing, you know, her classroom live on Facebook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I get very, so a lot of people don't like my answer to this question. Um, <laughs> because even though I brought my classroom home, like, I did that from an educator's mm -hmm. side, from the educator side, but on the mom side, I didn't turn my classroom into, I didn't turn my home into a classroom 
because that just wouldn't work for my children. And I tried it. Um, I will I will say that when they came home in March, like I said, okay, from eight to three, like this is what we're gonna do and <laughs> putting things up on the wall. And by the second day, it was just like, no, we're taking everything down. We're gonna sit at the kitchen table. We're just gonna make it work because it it didn't work for my it didn't work for my household. Right. Um, because they really needed they needed to feel at home at home. Um, mm -hmm. and trying to turn it into a school really didn't work for them. Yes. Right. Um because we really couldn't separate it was hard for them to separate the two. Right. Yeah. It was a little difficult for me as well because my, my older two are in school, but my younger two aren't. So right. I feel like if it was just my nine year olds, then it would be okay to like hang up things and um and, and just make all these awesome charts and hang them up and have everything rolling. But when I hang everything up and my three year old or my one year old rips it all down, it's just like, okay, this isn't going to work for us. This ain't gonna work. Right. So we're going to put everything in this folder, in this binder, and this is how we're going to learn at home. So I think it really depends on your, it depend, first of all, it depends on your home as well, because I never wanted parents to feel like they had to go out and paint their walls with chalkboard paint or paint yeah. their walls with dry erase um, board paint, because that everyone doesn't have the capacity to do that. Right. So in my videos, I really try to speak to every, every family, whether you're li maybe your family and you're living with another family member, or maybe you're in an apartment, you don't have an extra room that you can convert. Exactly. Um, so I really just try to make families feel like even if I just have forks and spoons, I can teach. And that was one of the things that I, I wanted to convey during mm -hmm. those lessons and especially even now going back into school like with the virtual setting if your child is distance learning at home don't feel like you have to completely convert a room yeah. into a classroom don't feel like you have to go out and buy a desk you don't have to go out and buy lights and all these different things like you have to make it work and if that's something that your child needs to be successful then you purchase those items but it's really about what does your child need? And some, some children, they just need three sharpened pencils. And they just need them to be in that exact spot when it's time for them to learn. And they'll get, you know, they'll get working and going. Right. Um, some children do need more. They, you may have a child that does need a desk and that does need um, um, an easel. That may be what they need. But I don't think that everyone should set up everything the exact same way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I, definitely. I've seen people even with, and I loved it, like the the dinner tables. What are those called? They like fold up and they're real small. Oh, yep. like, those two, food trays. Dinner, yeah, like a food tray or mm -hmm. TV dinner tray, right? Cheap. It's like, what, 10, between 10 and $20. Mm -hmm. And then you can fold it up and put it away. And they can right. have that sitting on the edge of their bed or yep. at the couch or the whatever. So it works for your space. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't have the money or the space to go get a big old desk, then you don't need to. For sure. I started doing uh, virtual learning with my kids 12 years ago mm -hmm. and totally thought I had to have a classroom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and quickly realized I did not, did not need yeah. that. Yeah. And now with my littlest one home, I, I don't have one poster, a ABC <laughs> poster or, you know, even he's doing multiplication. I don't have a poster of that up. Now he has a basket and he's got everything he needs in that basket. Mm -hmm. Right. And we pull out the basket and we can be at the kitchen table or in the backyard on the trampoline, you know, wherever. And, um, and that works. Mm -hmm. He's learning. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, whatever yeah. works. I mean, I yeah. used a cleaning caddy. I don't know if y'all remember that. I'm probably showing my age, but I had a cleaning caddy that had all my kids supplies. Mm -hmm. um, that I would put erasers, pencils, markers, map pencils, and whatever they, the basic things that I bought for their regular school supplies, I had extra at home, mm -hmm. especially in the summer. I had that to where I can lift it up, put it up, and I was done. It wasn't where I literally had to make a room into a classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we were talking before, before and trying to figure out what were some things you guys might want to think about. And one of the things I learned early on is multitasking is ineffective and inefficient for learning. 
<laughs> and the way I look at it as a mom is if I'm on the phone and they come and are trying to talk to me at the same time, I now can't understand the phone conversation or the kid in front of me talking. <laughs> right? My brain cannot right. compute two things. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get them so that they are, you know, monotasking and really, okay, it's math time. That is what we're thinking about. Because at home, you're used to not having to really do that. You can have people running around, jumping off the back of the couch, maybe not, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that happens. Uh -huh. Especially boys, when you so. got different age kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so for our for my older ones, I would set. You now they had phones because they were older, right? Mm -hmm. um, they would put on that "Do Not Disturb" during class time, so mm -hmm. that especially now, especially because all their friends are also home, and what I found was. Um, even on the computer, if they have like Discord or chatting options, it's pinging at them, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, their friend in California is in between classes, so he's trying to chat with my kid, but my kid's trying to do English, right? right. So he has to put on the do not disturb from this time to this time during school time. Sorry, you guys can chat and play games or, you know, all that stuff once everybody's done and sorry for the time differences. But you also should not be pinging him until his time because he's in California, right? And I'm in Texas. Right. So yeah. it's trying to figure that out um, to not have that, you know, phone distraction. As a parent, one of the things I did was I would put on Do Not Disturb on my phone if I was home because I was getting everybody calling me. They're like, oh, you're home. You work from home. Yeah, I'm working, number one. And I'm also <laughs> parenting and helping my kid learn. So right. stop calling me. <laughs> it's like it never fails. It's, it's when you're in the middle of something, you, like my mom always calls me and I'm like, how does she know that I'm in the middle of this? Like she calls, <laughs> like, you know, so that is a good uh, tip to like put not only your kid's phone on do not stir, but your phone. I think one being that my husband's a tech guy, what he would do is um, making sure that there was no video games, YouTube, nothing on their screen. Mm -hmm. And me and Shay were talking before where we were agreeing that um, we allowed our kids to pick spaces in the house, you know, where they feel comfortable and they can learn. And my oldest ones would always go in the bedroom. We're like, okay, door has to stay open and your back faces the door so we could see your laptop. So we're checking to make sure, are you chatting or are you, <laughs> or are you truly doing your homework? Mm -hmm. But then two, my husband would actually... Um, like I mentioned, he's a tech guy, had a software in his, on their computers. So he can see what everything they were doing, but yeah. that's my husband. I'm not saying everybody can do that, but that was one, but I think it's more of, you know, putting them in a place they feel comfortable in your, in your house that they can learn, yeah. but also make it visible where you can also make sure that they stay on task. Right. And one thing that I do for the elementary students is I have like all of my kids that were um, a part of my pilot program and even my daughters, like they have stand timers. You know, those little ones that come in the game box um, and we just have a five minute stand timer and they know, okay, when all the sand goes out the top, then you can ask mommy a question or then you can move <laughs> on to reading your book um, or a baker's timer, the one that you twist and they're like, my three-year-old knows how to use it. She twists, she knows how to twist it, and she knows when it starts to ding, she can put everything, you know, back inside of her box, or she can move on to the next thing. So those two things are really, really work well for elementary students, and if they have an iPad, they can always just go to the clock inside of their iPad and set a timer for that. Yep. But I really use it to teach my, like, to teach my clients and to teach my children about independence. Like you don't need me every second out of the day. You might feel like, you might think you need me, but you will survive five, 10 minutes without calling my name. I can promise you that you can. <laughs> so having those sand timers and those, and those baking timers are really, really good, especially for elementary. Yes, and if you have like some technology in your house, like those Google Homes or Alexas, if you uh -huh. know they are scheduled, they need to be on at math at 9 a.m. and history at 10, 15, whatever it is, you can tell Alexa to set an alarm for those times. Oh, she will. 
Mm-hmm. And she'll even tell you, go to history. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> history timer is going, you know, that way they're not coming to you. Mm-hmm. What, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? They, right. you know, their teacher had them get off. They've got a little bit of a break to get a snack. And they'll listen for Alexa to go off and, and do the timer. Um, yeah, or, not even. Oh. You can tell I'm going to say the phone lady because if I say her name, she'll come on. Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All the time. On your phone. <laughs> and same as your kids, like some, you know, um, our kids didn't have the cell phones, but I mean, I did. So mm-hmm. I was able to use my timer for that. But your cell phone is just as great as if you don't have, you know, the little mm-hmm. sand timer, or the other one, which I always did anyways, but it's actually really helpful to have those different types of tools. Uh, yeah. when and I use that and I use that for myself as well, because sometimes <laughs> I get so bogged down in work that I forget to engage with my children. I'm just like, okay, for an hour, I'm going to work on this project. And then for an hour, I'm going to go downstairs and actually talk to my children (laughs) and actually (laughs) engage with them. Because for us, it's this new norm that we've adjusted to. And I think we we are adjusting well as adults. But for my three and my one-year-old, it's just like, they have no idea. They just know I'm in the room all day. And I don't want to be a different mommy from before and pandemic like I still want to engage with them and have fun with them and dance with them and I've just found that sometimes I would sit in the computer for like two three hours and not speak to them or talk to them at all so I've been having to start using the timer for myself and just say okay stop and just go and talk to them or do a TikTok or eat a snack with them or whatever and then go back to work because I was getting really bogged down and and what I was doing and forgetting that I had little human human beings in here with me. So. And I know the kids feel the same way. I mean, they need a break. I mean, you don't expect them to be in front of a screen mm-hmm. eight hours a day. They need a break. All right. Like you were saying, that's actually a good example. We're going to do TikTok real quick. Okay, let's go. We're taking, you know, 15 minute break. We're going to go do this. And if you want a snack, come go grab a snack. Mm-hmm. And I learned two new TikToks this week, by the way, just in case. Awesome. Cheers. And you can share that. <laughs> I was like, no, I won't share. I won't share. <laughs> you have to follow me on TikTok. There we go. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. <laughs> One of the things, so for the working parents, I had to work some of the time. No, no. So I says, I've got adult kids and then a surprise kid at, at Caboose that's still at home. Um, but uh, that's my little one. But when the big ones were like junior high, high school, and I had to work outside the house, I had my phone with the schedule Mm -hmm. and I would call because at that time they didn't have cell phones Mm -hmm. and Hey, don't forget you have history. I know mom. Well, sometimes they didn't, (laughs) you know, or they knew when they chose not to, but now they didn't have an excuse because somebody called them and reminded them. Um, So that's always, you know, or even just sending them a reminder text. Love you. Have fun in history. Yeah, see, mine are much, much younger. So I get to, I get to kind of just give them little things throughout the day and in little increments. Because mm-hmm. um, like I said before, when I tried to do it just for like two or three hours straight, it just didn't work. So we've actually broken down to like 20 minutes a day. Like, I just need you to focus on this for 20 minutes. And then for the, you know, rest of the day, like we, you know, do walks and I let them play outside and, you know, let them just still get that physical activity piece in there. We still talk about what they want to be when they grow up, but it's really just that conversation piece because my children are younger Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of their elementary standards are, centered on conversation anyway so I make a point for us to just talk more for them to speak in complete sentences for them to complete their thoughts for them to advocate for themselves instead of it always being like a workbook or a worksheet like we still do those things but my mindset has shifted a little towards more of the communication and the social skills because they're not getting that right so I want to make sure that I still practice those things with them every day um, because I know that that's going to be one of the most important things for them, you know, once they get back, well, I'm not even going to say back into the school setting. Cause I also decided to homeschool. Um, but once they get back into the groove of 
whatever normalcy may look like for us <laughs> moving forward, I want them, you know, to still be, to still have that confidence and to still, you know, be able to carry a conversation with other people. That's, that's the most important thing to me right now. And that's true. I mean, sometimes you can even schedule like in between, you can schedule what um, I say this because I have a three-year-old granddaughter play date, you know, like even though they may not see each other in person, you can even, even though it's in, in, you know, on a phone, it, it could be, or on a computer, mm -hmm. they're not doing work, but they're socializing with right. another kid that. on the other side, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's a great way to, you know, do that. And plus walk around in the neighborhood. Cause actually now with, with all this COVID co cooties, what we call it, um, I've seen more neighbors <laughs> out outside now than I ever did before. And they're walk, you know, their kids are walking with them. They're taking strolls. And actually we're seeing more and more, we're connecting as neighbors and kids are connecting. Right. Right. So I think that's a great um, thing to bring up about, you know, taking that break and doing those different little things for them, especially little ones, because I know with my three-year-old, I'm learning all over again, having a three-year-old <laughs> in the house yeah. is there, you know, you've got to keep them busy, you know, okay, we're only going to do a short time of this and then we got to do this. <laughs> yeah. And they get it. And it, it doesn't take them long at all to, to catch on to. And they live for routine and structure. When mm -hmm. kids are that young, they live for structure. Yeah. Right, so I, do you have ideas of some of the things you're going to do with your little ones while your big ones are say doing math or, mm -hmm or something like that, how you're going to keep the little ones busy. Yeah, and I, I was looking down because I thought maybe I had my paper on my on my printer. But I actually created these color mats for my three-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, so I created these mats, and on each page, it's four colors. So one color, one, one page may be red, yellow, orange, and blue. And then I have these cubes for her, and she matches the cube to the color. Mm -hmm. um, and then she creates towers with them after she matches them to the actual color that's on the sheet. And then on the very last page, it, it just is a, it's a little chart that just says, I know all of my colors. So once she learns the colors, like she gets a sticker and she gets to put it inside of the box that she knows. Um, so that's something that I created for her. And that's also on my website um, as a free download. So if any families are listening or grand families um, that, you know, have young children, it's really like for those two, I would say two to four year olds. Mm -hmm. And they can use that while their older siblings are um, doing a lesson. And even when my, even when my daughters are finished their lesson, like I say, hey, go over to your little sister, see, you know, what she's done on her color chart. And then for my one year old, I literally just take Tupperware and I put his fruit inside and I cover it with water and he kind of like, and he just finds the fruit and eats it. So yeah. that's something that he does while, you know, my three-year-old and my nine-year-old are doing their thing. It's kind of like he's bobbing, bobbing. <laughs> bobbing um, so and I just kind of made that up on the fly because I'm like, okay, what can I give? I didn't want to give him something that he could choke on, but I'm just like, hey, I can put your, your blueberries or your um, sliced grapes in some water. And instead of him being able to get it quickly, like he has to actually, you know, go through the water to actually get it. So those are two things that I've been doing with my, with my children. And some things are just super random. Like yesterday, I just let them go outside and play in the rain and they thought that was just heaven. <laughs> Oh, so a lot of, a lot of times it's the mommy, ink, the mommy instant that kid inks me. Uh, <laughs> mommy word that I can't pronounce. Instinct, that, kicks yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> um, that kicks in and I'm just like, okay, what new thing or idea can I, can I do with them? And a lot of times I'll share it, I'll share a picture, I'll share a video, um, mm -hmm. or I'll create a blog or I'll put it on my website because I know that there are other families out there. I don't just want to say moms, but there are other families out there as well that are just thinking, okay, what do I do with my toddler right now? So a lot of times I do share that information. Well, especially when they don't have the means to go buy the things that, you know, to make it look like a, to keep, you know, kids busy, you can use everyday things in your everyday own house. Everyday things, yep. And yep. that's, it works just fine. It's like, you know, my granddaughter, when we got her this really cute car, mm -hmm. she actually played in the box that the car came in. <laughs> I don't know what kids in boxes are, but hey, that's another idea. 
yeah. have them go through a tunnel in a box, you know? <laughs> All my girls do dress up. Like, sometimes I'm just like, hey, just throw in my closet and put my clothes on. And they love it. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's like a 30-minute to one-hour time frame where they're in the closet and I can get some things done. So it's just being very, very creative. And I think the biggest thing, especially being at home, is not only separating, you know, like, oh, my God, they're at home. How do I keep them focused is distractions. Mm -hmm. So, Isis, do you do anything with your kids, like, to block, like, some distractions? Yeah, just like you guys were saying earlier, just like we're blocking the time. So, my daughters have an iPhone, but it's not unlocked until 12 noon, mm -hmm. and it locks at 7 p.m. So, they yeah. have the seven-hour window um and usually they're just facetiming their grandparents or on youtube watching somebody eat food loudly um so so <laughs> a lot of times they're just on there doing very random things but when they wake up in the morning they know okay I, my phone is locked so one day they literally just decided to redecorate their room um because they didn't have their phone as an option and then for myself, like I do the same thing. Um, I put a lot of, I lock a lot of my apps. Um, a lot of, like when I get up in the morning, that's a lot of times when I do my social media thing. So you may see me post between 6, 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. because that's when I, I just get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then also all of my social media is done by 7 p.m. Like I'm not commenting. I, a lot of times I may reply to the emails or comments early in the morning um, because I just have to cut off time and that's and that's the way that I cut off those distractions um, because I'm also married so I don't want to check emails and reply and do all these things when my husband's been working all day and a lot of times I am on the computer when he comes home but at 7 38 after this last you know session or whatever that I've been doing that's my that's my family time that's my husband's time and I really, I wake up earlier than my family, so I'm not distracted by them when I'm, <laughs> when I'm trying to get things done. Right. So it's really about planning. I think when we plan, we eliminate a lot of distractions um, because a lot of times it just, it, when we don't plan, it's kind of like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know what those top three things are that I need to get done. Um, so really writing things down helps me not to be distracted. Um, because if I get a phone call or a text, I'm like, okay, is this, is this text message going to help me complete something that's on my to-do list? Is this phone call going to help me complete something on my to-do list? Right. So it really helps me not to get distracted when I know what my goals are for that day. And I think that would work the same for students, like mm -hmm. planning, you know, have your schedule for the day mm -hmm. sometimes especially a lot of parents you know that were thrown in this covid in mm -hmm. the spring where they had to figure this out some were able to stay home and some still had to work away from home but had to figure out a schedule to do this distance learning right and so i think it's a good way like you were mentioning planning a day where okay we're gonna get up at eight o'clock kids you know eight in the morning and we're going to get dressed, get them out of the PJs, you know, get them into a routine. And I think that schedule does work and they take their time and then they get breakfast and then, okay, now we got to, the school says, you know, you got to log in whatever time it tells right. you it's like 9 a.m. And you're like, okay, time to talk to your teachers. And so right. do that. And, and I think headphones too, it would be helpful. Yeah. Um, because that'll eliminate some of those distractions as well. And then just really having that conversation with them about what about how important what they're doing is mm -hmm. um, a lot of times they have to know like hey reading reading this book or doing this reading lesson is going to be important for xyz um because then they'll get a little more invested in it when they know oh i'm doing this because i i need to become a better reader because becoming a better reader is going to help me right with whatever i have to do later on in life um so really I think that helps as well, having those conversations, having those headphones, um, even even them knowing the plan, knowing mm -hmm. what's going to happen, that helps a lot um, with the distractions as well, because a distraction is really, a dis you're really distracted when you're really not interested in that thing that you're supposed to be focused on. <laughs> so we really have to make 
learning fun, make learning interesting. Exactly. So they're not distracted by all of those other things. So really looking at, okay, how engaged are they in what they're learning? Because that will minimize the distractions as well. And then sometimes like with my kids, we had music, but oh, yeah. we actually watched what music we were playing in the background. We mm -hmm. agreed that no TV was going to be on while we were learning. Right. And then also playing, you know, more instrumental music work for us. Mm -hmm. And actually to this day, my kids are adults. To this day, they love instrumental music yeah. because of how we did it, you know, when they were doing homework or something, a project in the right. summer or so forth. That really did help mm -hmm. um, when it came to the music. The headphones really helped, especially when, you know, you have older kids and they all want to talk or one's talking to a teacher the other one you know it's great to cancel out all of that noise so that they can right. focus on what they need to focus on so that's right. a really great idea yeah and yeah, i think I, I saw a couple of parents uh with like multiple kids as they're starting distance learning and um one idea and you have to figure out what works for your family but during live classes they had to bring their laptop or their chromebook or whatever to the kitchen table so mom who knew, okay, we know you're in class. And then during the asynchronous, you know, kind of the assignment piece that's separate than live class, then you can go to the living room or, mm -hmm. you know, the, the uh, you know, table in your bedroom or whatever. But they had, you know, four little boys for morning, you know, 8 a.m. They're all sitting there. They had, you know, noise canceling headphones so that they couldn't hear each other. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, mom or dad or whoever it was that was home knew that they were on task for at least their their synchronous live classes mm -hmm. and then they were able to to go do their asynchronous work so I thought that was a really good idea yeah I think uh, what we've done is we did uh, cardboard boxes one of the kitchen tables because my kids tend to be distracted with each other mm -hmm. so <laughs> cardboard box so when they knew that they were working on whatever they're working on they're not looking like my oh, son yeah. wasn't looking at my daughter oh, making faces so right. they were able to concentrate in something like, and then that was simple because I had a cardboard box in my house or whatever I could find to put in between them, whether it be one time we used a baby gate and I put paper on it so I could like stop looking at each other. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I have a baby gate. <laughs> <laughs> you can I use baby gates for all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I like that idea. Um, I think it's, and now that, you know, working with my sister and my nephew who's autistic is is kids with uh, attention difficulties how to keep them focused mm -hmm. and i think that would be good to share um either you shay or isis has any ideas to share with parents for how to keep kids like that focused mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my i've got two um kiddos that that deal with attention difficulties mm -hmm. and so I saw, you know, the, the kids at the kitchen table and that worked really well for their family. And again, like I said, you have to figure out what works for, for your family. I thought that was the best idea ever years ago. Yeah, not such a good idea for my attention difficulty kids. Mm -hmm. um, because even if I'm just doing dishes in the kitchen, they're watching me instead of doing their school. So for both of them, what we found that worked well was one was in the formal dining room one was in the living room on like you know the little card tables facing the wall i know that just sounds horrible but that's it that way they didn't have anything else to look at and distract them and they would have you know some like fidgety kind of things because they had you know wanted to fidget a little bit um so they could fidget and still be in on their synchronous learning or even their asynchronous and really pay attention to that um, and I had to really talk with my husband when he was at working from home about times when you can walk through the room. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's like, please do not walk through the room during these times because they, you're, they're going to watch you walking through the room and just that little bit then completely derails where we're going and, and offsets them. Um, and so just trying to figure out each individual kid. Okay, not all of my kids. I've got a bunch of them. Not all of my kids, you know, my littlest one, his favorite place is the couch. Yeah. And the couch faces the whole stinking house. It doesn't matter who's going up or down the stairs or, or in and out the door and he's fine. So it really just depends on each individual kid. And you know your kid and, and, 
And it's okay if on week one, you start one thing and week two, you go and you do something different. Right. That's okay. The interesting thing, you know, is these kids are used to going from summertime and, you know, whatever your family routine is and your daily routine is during the summer, usually they then walk into a school building and now they know the expectation of their day is different because it's a different physical location, right? Where for distance learning, that's not your location is the same thing. It's at home. And so I also homeschool my youngest one, Isis, and um, we just make a big deal about, okay, we are now starting school. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here's the schedule. We post right. it. He sees it. He has knows the expectation of the week. Of the oh, I think she froze. Um, I think another one that my granddaughter did is, and I give kudos to my daughter, today, is go over the day, what are we doing today? Oh, she's you know, a, not just the school. She's back. Yeah. We lost yeah. you, Shay. Wow. I think we're losing her again. Did we lose her again? I think so. I think so too. So, yeah. um, can you hear me? Oh, she's back. I think we hear you now. Are you, can you hear us? <laughs> so with my granddaughter, my daughter created a corner for her because she was comfortable yes. being by the window and having pillows, um, making it comfortable for mm -hmm. her. And then she knew that this was reading time mm -hmm. and she loved it. Yep. I mean, I think is creating a space for each of your kid, whether it be a couch, a corner, yep. Yep. Um, it could be, you know, it could be the kitchen table, depending on what is comfortable for them. And I think what also helped with us in our household is we had a calendar <laughs> of reminders. We got the big calendar and we wrote on there like, you know, time of day we needed to do certain uh -huh. things or this needs to be done or especially after school activities. Uh -huh. We had everything on there. Actually, I had it color coded <laughs> yeah. by each kid because I had four. <laughs> But that works, though, and that was going to, you said two of the things, two of my three things that I was going to suggest. But when I worked with um, children that were conquering attention deficit disorders, I always, always, always made sure that my structure was the same. I mean, down to the minute. Like, it could change for any other kid, but for that kid in particular, the structure had to be the exact same way or they were going to get just very anxious and 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 this kid like he was a he was a nail biter and he was a nail like he would peel his nails like if you had like a fire drill or anything like that like anything that was out of that structure um it just really it 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 really um it made him very anxious so when we're at home with those with those same children, like a try, I would say try to plan and, and keep your day as consistent as possible, especially if they are, you know, especially if they're already um, easily like distracted because it, it, it works for them when they know what's coming next. Um, and if what's next doesn't come next, you're going to get a thousand and one questions about why things have changed and, you know, different things like that. And also when I, um, when I worked with children that were conquering autism, it was very important for them to have what was theirs. So if right. it was a brown bear or a red truck, like, I don't care what you're doing. If you need it while you read, if you need it while you do your math, if that's your thing, and that's the thing that you have to hold on to, and that's the thing that you have to have, let them have that thing. And even at home, <laughs> Um, if they have to have right. 10 teddy bears around them in order for them to get the work done, allow those things to happen. And I will also say just in reading and research, watch what they're digesting as well. Mm -hmm. um, I had to help a family change their diet because it was just wow. like, look, the fruit loops and the pop tarts and the fruit snacks, that's not helping because they break down that sugar very quickly. Right. And, and it, and it just keeps going, 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 and it doesn't slow down. And a lot of times if they're on um, medication, it doesn't pair well with that medication either. So I would also, you know, I would also ask parents to look at the diets too of those children that are conquering those things because right. a lot of times it, it affects them. Um, it affects them differently. Oh, that's a good tip. Cause I know with my nephew, he has certain foods he has to eat and those are the only ones. 
Right. And like when I, when he comes over and we're doing things, it's, mm -hmm. this is what I have to have, but I also need to know his day. Like right. this is his typical day. Okay. At two o'clock he goes on and he watches mm -hmm. YouTube and watches making trains. That's his thing. Right. Right. So I don't change that. So it's good to know what each kid is needing uh -huh. um, when it comes to you know, focusing right. and stuff. And I've had a mom that where she says she uses an exercise ball. It would just, you know, she had to put him in his, in his room because it would distract the other kids because he's bouncing up and down. But that was his focus. It's done, right. You know, but that's, I mean, whatever works for your kid. Um, is what you need to do to help at home. And you can right. use anything at home that helps. And normally they have the stuff at home. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say Velcro too has worked. Um, and both when it comes to just like intent, um, attention uh, deficit disorder and um, autism students that I've had, just having a piece of Velcro that they can just rub their fingers against. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's the different textures too that work with the brain and I, and I would study the brain more, but I don't, I don't really like reading that much, but <laughs> <laughs> the way that the way, but the way that the touch and, and the brain, like the way that it all works is really right. amazing. But those different textures really help like Velcro or um, the bubble, the bubble wrap, bubble wrap that pops. Um, just any, the if, if you can have just like containers of different textures, that they can have and just like put their hands on that really works too and see and i think that's what you brought up a good topic yeah. is certain supplies you know having mm -hmm. an area in your house where you can put those supplies like mm -hmm. this is going to be you know for ashley in the corner okay. over here this is her bucket right. of school stuff i'm not saying snacks we're just talking about school stuff right but where they can put things or maybe you know jake is the one in the middle that needs that bubble wrap Mm -hmm. and knows where to find these are the things I use for when it's right. time to learn and that's key that's that's going to be key because that's what we did well that's what I did in the classroom like I I had things at eye level I had things in in cubbies and containers because I want always wanted my children to have that independence and I right. say children interchangeably, but I could be talking about my students, but I always call them my children. <laughs> um, because that's, that's important, too, for their development. And right. that even helps the adult not always have to have a conversation about this is where it goes, this is where it is. Just have it labeled already in your home. Um, if you have, like, those, those drawers, that, that are, that are, those clear drawers that you can just pull out. And everyone has their labeled drawer. This is where everything is inside of your drawer. Um, that's really helpful to, to have parents that um, have those things set up already as well as far as your organization. And I used to have my kids take out their clothes for the entire week. What are you wearing Monday through Friday, even down to the pajamas that you might put on that night? <laughs> Because I need, I need things to go as smoothly as possible. And if you already know what you're wearing, that's half the battle. If I already know what I'm cooking for dinner, that's half the battle as well. So really organizing the space, but also as the, as the family member, as the mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever you are that's taking care of, of these little precious people, mm -hmm. have as much as your life <laughs> organized as well because you're the leader of the household. And if you're all over the place, then they're going to be all over the place. So I try to organize as much of my life as I can as well. Well, yeah, because you're the superintendent of your own you right. know, school, your right. own home. <laughs> That's my resume. I am the superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, and you don't have to go buy all of this stuff. I mean, no. we used an old um, shoe. Well, the, it wasn't a rack. It was like a shoe cubby. And we took that where we were putting stuff in and using it yeah. for supplies. And we used or an old nightstand that we had. We put, you know, all of the school supplies. The kids knew this was a place where all the school supplies, papers, pens, pencils, anything that they needed, they knew where to go in the house. Right. And if it was low, we did communicate with each other. Like, you know, my son was like, mom, you know, we don't have any more erasers or we don't have any more pens. However, we would go and replenish those supplies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's a really good idea to have a place in your house and you don't have to go buy all of this expensive stuff to do that. Just use everyday things in your house, an old bookshelf, an old shoe rack, you know, anything that you have, you can create, uh -huh. just pull that in there. Shay brought in a good idea and um, when it came to snack time, because I know like we were saying in the summer, 
our kids would eat us out of our homes. And a lot of families were saying this during, you know, COVID in the spring, they were like, oh my God, my kids are eating more than normal. What can I do? Yes. Can you guys hear me? And I'll, I'll try yes. to I'll we can you. see you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you for how long? <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing that I've done over the years because my kids have been home is have a like a bucket for that day, and those are the snacks they can eat that day. Yep. Or now I've got a shoe rack on the inside of the pantry, and there's different sections. This shoe rack. Cade can eat today or, or this week. <laughs> Kyle can eat this week. Connor can eat this week. Camden can eat this week. And when those snacks are gone, they're gone. And try to keep the artificial colors out of there. It, but also have a basket of fruit and they can eat as much fruit as they want. So they know they can't go in and get the entire box of Oreos or whatever it is out of the pantry, they have to go to the basket of snacks or the shoe rack of snacks with their section. Yep. Yep. That's key. Yep. I mean, to have something like that, I mean, especially my kids as they got older, I had to do that. Like, nope, uh, this is all you have. If you eat all your snacks that we bought for the week, that's it. <laughs> Guess what? You're eating apples. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, and that's another thing. It's a good thing to put down the rules of the house, mm -hmm. you know, establish those rules, put it somewhere where they will be reminded. Like when we're seeing having that calendar or somewhere, you know, even if it means putting a tack on the wall with a piece of paper, which I did <laughs> and, do them and having together. that list of rules. Yep. And do them with the kids. Yep. Yep. So they can't oh, yeah. say, Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know this or that. Nope. We came up with these together. And I even used to have my students sign it. I used to have them sign, this is what we said we would do in our classroom. And they were five, so they would, you know, scribble. <laughs> but they knew. <laughs> we came up with it together, and they signed it. And I said, all right, now, this is technically a contract. You know, we went through all those different things. But I can, you can do the same thing at home. I did it with my nine-year-olds. I said, hey, if, you're, if, if there is toys in your floor the next time I come in your room, I'm taking your phone for three days. And I've had their phone for the past three days, three days, and their floor has been clean for the past three days. Yep, you have to set like, those you rules. Can do it. Right, I know that you can do it, it's just a matter of you actually doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think one of the big key thing is, is technology. A lot of yeah. uh, families were struggling with the technology, either not having a laptop or having the tools and accessory. I think one of them, um, you know, it's like, can I just do, uh, computer or can I have a mouse and a lot of times what I was you know communicating with the families here was you know Amazon and a lot of people don't know this have used accessories for that mm -hmm. where you can buy at a really cheap price mm -hmm. um, like a mouse or even like say you need a keyboard or um, just anything like that when it comes to technology Amazon has really great and then watch the sales at your store like Walmart Target you know your normal you know, stores in your neighborhood to see if they put these, especially like around school time, they put all of these on sale. And when I say sale, they go down. <laughs> um, and then sometimes now I'm showing my age, there are computer repair stores, but they're still around. Um, they also have a lot of things that they resell because they're fixing these computers or fixing the mouses and then they resell them and they're really cheap. It's, you know, that's one good thing. And, and here in Houston, we have a nonprofit organization called CompuDoc. And um, they actually give free technology for a lot of students here. Oh, they yeah. make sure that they have computers. That is their goal. Mm -hmm. um, and you can register, you go onto their website, and I will put this on the comment section for Houston because um, they're only a Houston-based organization. Okay. But they, what they do is they ask people to give them their old laptops. They clean them up, fix them up, and then they redistribute them out to students at any, you know, any grade from K through 12. And it's a great organization that's helping a lot of families here in Houston. I don't know if you guys have anything like that or any suggestions when it comes to technology. Yeah, I know we have a lot of resource centers here. Um, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that they're open like with social distancing um, precautions put in place, but I know for sure that we do have those 
um, we also have a Goodwill that does the one. computers. Um, I know, well, I know for sure in, in Charleston, our, our computer store had to move everything into our general Goodwill store, but mm -hmm. they still have that computer section there. Um, if families want to look there for computers. And I'll also say just to look at the printers as well, um, because a lot of times your, your child may need a resource that the school may not provide. Right. Um, so you may need just a printer just so you can print off. And I won't say don't do not print off like 50, 60 worksheets. I'm suggesting <laughs> that you print <laughs> off maybe one or two worksheets a week and you invest in some sleeve protectors and you put those worksheets inside that sleeve protector and you get a dry erase marker and they get two worksheets a week. And so that you're not continuously printing, but I have found um, that I needed a printer when my daughters came home because there were just certain things that the school provided that they weren't ready for. Um, as far as the academic piece of it, they were, it was just above their head and I knew I needed to go back a grade and get them some refresher worksheets. Um, so I would say, you know, definitely keep your eyes open for a printer sales and deals as well, because you, you may need to actually, you know, get resources that fit the needs of your child, but definitely look into uh, resource centers that are open, that have desktops, that have laptops, mm -hmm. um, look into that Amazon piece that Wendy already talked about, but also look at your thrift stores because yeah. you know, I was in the classroom. I went to a lot, um, looked at a lot of thrift stores for computer um, mice, especially for younger children, because they need right. to learn how to click. Um, mm -hmm. So I would definitely have one of those. Um, I would definitely have a mouse available because if they decide to do standardized testing, they're going to have to know how to use a computer mouse in order to complete that test unless, they're, unless your school district does everything on a Chromebook but every school district hasn't gotten there yet. So definitely have them um, begin to practice with the computer mouse. That's great. And Shay, do you have anything to add to that for technology? You're still on mute. <laughs> She's like, I'm on mute. I'm having a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that I always kind of did was a reward system as well. Um, so that if they were on task and using technology the way they were supposed to use it and in the classes they were supposed to be in and got their things done, um, then we kind of had even a treasure box, Oh, yeah. you know? Um, and it doesn't have to look like a treasure box. Mine looked like a treasure box, but I found, you know, cheap things in the dollar section or the dollar tree or you know whatever and they could go to the treasure box and get stuff and even my junior high kids because you can get you know gift cards for five bucks to taco right. bell or mcdonald's <laughs> and ooh, i can go you know myself and pick something you know <laughs> whatever it is and and so um definitely don't forget to kind of reward them. And it doesn't always have to be tangible. It can even be, um, you know, going, going for a walk, just you with mom mm -hmm. or dad, or you right. get to call grandma, mm -hmm. you know, and because especially if you've got more than one kid, they kind of get lost in the shuffle sometimes and they get lumped all together. You know, right. it was the Mac and boys at my house and I still, get, you know, mix up their names and they give me, you know, <laughs> crap for mixing up their names but one-on-one -on -one time with them is a reward in itself oftentimes that they just crave um and need especially right now yeah that's good well isis um i wanted to ask do you have any other tips for parents who are distance learning before we wrap uh, up hmm. your last <laughs> golden nugget <laughs> she's like i talk talked about a lot <laughs> <laughs> but my biggest, my biggest thing um, that has helped me, and, it, and it, it doesn't sound like it's tied to distance learning, but it really is. I had to find, I had to really find what my three pillars were for myself. Mm -hmm. And I came up with faith, family, finances. 
So I start my day with my faith, with my meditation, with my prayer, with my, with my, to center myself. Mm -hmm. And then I move to my family. Okay, how will I be the best mom, the best wife that I can be? And then my finances. What am I going to do to grow as an educator, to grow in business? And I say that because we can't lead our home as, as parents or as educators if we're not full first and if we're not well and if we're not healthy. So that's why I gave that example of my pillars because we are just so ready to move in and to teach and to learn, but you have to remember that you're a person, mm -hmm. right? And every time I talk to my parents, I'm just like, look, how are you? You're a person, let's talk about you. And now let's talk about how I can help you to teach your child. Because the right. first thing I want you to do is love your child. And I, I could, at the end of the day, I love what I do, but I love my children and I, don't want, and I want to know that my children are well before I want to know whether or not they can read a cipher. So I really want us, even though we're talking about distance learning, we're focused on distance learning, I really want you, you all to focus on your children as children. And I'm saying that because when I was in the classroom, I focused on your children as children first before I taught them anything. So I'm not going to give you just straight content, academic advice, before I tell you your children are still your children. Yes, you have to teach them, and yes, they have to learn, but at the end of the day, they're your children. Hug them, kiss them before you give them a book. That's my, that's my good in it. That's great advice. <laughs> and that's a great way to end up, you know, to end the show. Thank you so much, Isis, for joining us on the show and giving us some great tips and ideas. You are awesome. Um, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Um, it, where can the families find your information? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on Facebook. Uh, Fundamentals of Learning is the name of my page. You can go like, follow, and share. <laughs> uh, but then you can also go to isisman.com. And there, like I mentioned earlier, I do have a free resources tab there. I also have an online course that you can purchase from my website. And I also have kits that you can purchase, um, learning kits specifically for kindergarten families that you can purchase off of my website. I'm super reachable, super accessible. Um, and you can find all of my social media links on my website, which is isisfan.com. And we will make sure to put all of this in the comment field. So if you have questions for Isis or you want to check out her Facebook page. You're welcome to do that. And um, thank you everybody for watching the show and make sure you watch us on Monday. We're going to talk about the family emotional check-in. We, um, and Isis kind of hit a little bit about that. But we're gonna that that was a great lead in. Thank you. I know. <laughs> you read our minds what we're going to talk about on Monday. <laughs> I know. She, I was like, oh my gosh, she's leading right into that. <laughs> We're going to have two special guests coming on on that day. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the day and have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.